to a special episode of the High Altitude Show. I'm your host with the most, Dr. B.O.A., a.k.a. Book of Alpha Running Me, here in the Alphasphere, with a couple of special guests. One is on deck and the other is preparing to show up. Right now, man, I'm going to have to have you men, everyone in here, man. Y'all do me a favor right quick and welcome my brother, the one and only. Black Ram 313, back at it again, and you know why, but I'm going to let him tell you. Black Ram 313, back at it again, you know why? Because this is therapeutic, man, live with Dr. B.O.A., talking about manhood. Salute to the chat, salute to you, Dr. B.O.A. Uh, no doubt, brother, no doubt. Good to have you back in the Alpha Sphere once again, man, because you know whenever we come in, we bound to win, man. So everybody in the chat, see you over in the chat, man. Appreciate all of y'all being in here and on time, man. You know, we're going to give it a few minutes, man, to see, you know, who else going to roll up in. We got 26 watching so far, 23 likes. Hey, man, that's a good number. But four of y'all ain't hit the like yet. We got 27 watching, 23 likes, man. Four people in here, ear hustling. We ain't even started yet, man. Hit the like button for us, man. It don't take a whole lot of effort. You know what you're going to get. We proven ourselves to be very likable with our content, man. Go ahead and hit the like button. Appreciate it. What's been good with you, Ram? Man, slow motion, brother. Just, you know, the every great grind, the everyday process, man, trying to keep my head, you know, above water and everything, man, living this lifestyle that we live, man. You know, you life come with ups and downs, you know what I mean? But we uh, like the ways, man. We, uh, we, we keep popping our head up in the current. All the time, man, all the time. Why these brothers sticking their head in the ground like an ostrich, man? We trying to stay afloat, man. Trying to keep it there. Trying to get that, uh, that oxygen in. Man. <laughs> what we're going to talk about today, man, is what makes a man a man? Now, I know Ram has an awful lot to say about this, as do I. But I'm going to tell you something. I think there's four questions that a man has to ask himself. You have to ask yourself, what type of man do you want to be? What type of man are you built to be? Because that could be two different things. What type of man do you live to be? And what type of man would you die to be? If you haven't asked yourself these questions, then you don't really know what kind of man you are and even what kind of man you hope to be. These are questions every man should ask himself pretty regularly. Now, before we get started with this thing, man, I want to say something to y'all, man. Brother Black Ram and I, man, we go way back. He's one of my first, I keep forgetting, right? I think one of my first was either 10 or 20 subscribers, Ram. Yeah, it's about, I want to say it was probably about round 20. I mean, you, yeah, yeah about, about between 10 and 20, somewhere. Yeah, there. yeah. Well, I mean, one of my very first subs was the Brother Black Ram. And when I turned on the Ram, I wasn't even on this channel. I was on the other channel. Let me tell you something. <laughs> The Black Ram that you hear now is a much more mature, toned-down version yes, of Brother sir. Black Ram 313. But if you want to hear Black Ram 313 before all the, you know, the apocalypse and all the, hey, man, we're going to strike your channel down if you don't clean it up. You know all the things that YouTube went through. Exactly. Go subscribe to Black Ram for Vengeance, man. I am telling you. It's not for the faint of heart, man. If you're one of those guys that, you know, you get all offended when you hear certain type of language and certain things said and you still think there's a naywalk, you just stay over here on the Black Ram 313 channel. And everybody <laughs> else, go check him out over there, man, because well, I knew then, man, this brother right here is the man when it comes to this here particular platform. Absolutely. And, you know, they, they took down a couple of my videos, man. I had some um, videos on chauvinism on the 313, uh, on the Black Ram for Vengeance channel. So they took that off. So a lot of the stuff I'm going to have to just go on and put on Patreon, man. The crackdown is real, man. They, they flagged about two or three videos. I'm like, man, videos that have been up for years. But you know how the new rules go, man. So in this space, you know, we kind of have to play, you know, our cards right. So a lot of content, man, that's really gritty and raw. Going to have to be moved to Patreon if, if you know, if it's going to be heard. Because, uh, man, the Black Round for Vengeance is one of those channels that's, you know, that's gritty. But uh, it's true, proven too much for YouTube. Yeah, certainly, certainly, man, certainly. And I'm going to be honest with you, brother. If you, if you notice, I don't know if you can tell, man, but I've uploaded 700 and some videos since I've been on YouTube. Really? Wow, brother. That is a lot. I'm not even, I think I've been on YouTube since uh, 2013 and I think I got maybe 200 altogether. 
So you've been putting in that work, brother. You've been on for what, maybe a year and a half, two years now, right? Yeah, maybe a year and a half, close to two years. But my total now is down to under 300. Really? They took that many videos? Man, listen, bro. They had a spell where for like a week they was going in, man, and age restricted all my old videos man they age restrict i'm telling my bro every day i was getting an email where i had a batch of five or six videos that they age restricted so you know what wow. i just went in i saw what they were doing i went in and age restricted all them videos myself and i said you know what okay if they too grown for youtube i'll take them down and i, I got that catalog of videos just sitting back man you know and every now and then man, i throw them up on patreon man but yeah they they, they went through some man and uh they changed everything up a whole lot yeah, man. So, we, you know, with this algorithm, you know, we have to be really, really careful what we say. You notice, you know, I never say BW. I always say succubus. And and I did that a couple of years ago, maybe a year and a half ago on purpose, because I know, you know, how YouTube does. So, I, you know, we got to use certain code words and buzzwords, man, and uh, keep it like underground. You know what I mean? Because if you say too much, you know, they're going to get you. And I try not to use a whole lot of expletives or get real you know, into, you know, things that, you know, the birds and the bees type stuff, you know, a few things here and there, but man, you know, it, it really has to be toned up. But here's the thing. And as you know, this BOA, if you got good content, you don't need the expletives and, you know, you don't have to say BW every, you know, five or six words, you know, but it's just one of those things where you used to talking freely. Now we got to just, uh, you know, have a little bit more discipline and beware of that algorithm, man. Right, right. And that right there is the first first example. We're not even we haven't even started the show yet. But that's the first example of being a man. You have something that you need to do. The rules change. The rules of engagement change. Now, if you don't make an make an adaptation to these rules, you're not going to be able to do what you set out to do. Now, you got two choices. You can say, well, the hell with those rules. I'm going to do what I want to do. You know, like a kid does. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do what I want to do. Uh, throw a temper tantrum. Go against the grain. Or you could be a man and say, okay, listen, I got a mission. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do it. If I need to make these adjustments, I'm going to make them. Absolutely. Because you have two choices. Either tone the message down and still be heard. Or keep it turned up and get blocked or get, uh, you know, booted off of YouTube. So the question is, which one is, is more important? The message or how I bring the message? And because uh, when the YouTube first started cracking down on stuff a few years ago, that's what I was faced with. I had my, some of my brothers saying, no, nah, man, we're we going to keep it grinding and gritty and still go hard. No, 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 no. And I said, you got two choices. You either stay and adapt or st stay stuck in your ways and get banned from, from the tube. And if the message is great and the message is important, then you're going to want to stay here. Because it's not just about me as a content creator. It's about being part of the community and also giving the brothers some information and us sharing because it's, it's new brothers coming to the tube every day to need this game. So it's about them, not about me, uh, you know, talking reckless. So yeah, man, we, we, we adapt to the situation. We evolve, man, and we keep it moving. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So man, we're going to go ahead and get into the show right quick, man. But let me get all y'all men to do the thing for me right quick, man. You know, I found out today, man, that my dad passed and just because you know we're doing the show man i decided to go ahead and do it because my dad taught me hey you know I, well no matter what happens if it involves emotion you take care of what you have to take care of in real life and then you deal with the emotional stuff because trust me son you're gonna deal with the emotional stuff from then on so i'm on man but i would just want to take a few seconds right here man and give my dad a moment of silence man because i i lost a huge part of my life today man so Let's give a moment of silence to my pops, man. I appreciate it. Hey, I appreciate that, homies. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Real talk. So, man, Ram, let's get on into this thing, man, because uh, this is a topic, man. When I came up with the title, I said, ah, oh, man, the homie Ram is going to love this one. <laughs> Absolutely, brother. You already know. Great minds think alike. Certainly, certainly. Now, there's a lot of things going on, man, on this platform, Ram, and I don't know how active you've been listening, but, uh, you know, I listen around a little bit when I have time, especially on Saturday, man, on, on my Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. And 
I've been hearing a whole bunch of back and forth about this is a man. No, this is a man. No, that's not a man. This is a man. No, that's a weak man. This is a strong man. And mm -hmm. it's always got something to do with females. Ooh -wee. You know, it's like these brothers can't be a man without female. Don't you understand that there's a man out here that ain't never been with a female and he's 100% man? Absolutely. So, and, and that's what really made me decide, hey, man, I, I think me and the brothers need to come on and talk about this because, uh, mm -hmm. hey, man, you know, there's a lot of young men, like you just stated, brother, there's a lot of young men out here listening, and not all of them are listening to us. Mm -hmm. They're listening to these other guys as well, and my problem is when young men, when they're in that impressionable state and they're looking towards you for guidance mm -hmm. and you give them something that really isn't giving them anything. And it's a, it's a funny thing. Um Dealing with women is only an aspect of uh, manhood or a byproduct of it. But if you're alone on an island, you should still be a man. If you're in the ditches, if you're in the trenches, if you're fighting a war, you know, some wars last for years with no woman in sight, you are still a man without female validation, without female attention. Hey, even if women never found you even attractive, you still got to be a man. But here's the thing, though, in a matriarchal system that we live in, man, uh, a lot of people have to associate manhood also with womanhood and a woman's validation. You remember coming up, man, and I, I know we on the two, so I can't use a whole lot of expletives. But uh, when I was in, in high school and in elementary school, um, the first thing we would say if we want to make another guy feel bad, we will say, uh, that's why you don't get no pee. That was always a big insult. See, you don't get no pee. Uh, see, y'all guys over there, y'all think y'all y'all don't get no pee. That was always a thing. Because as a kid, we always associated manhood with getting the pee. But the funny thing is, you got grown men who haven't grown up who associate manhood with getting the pee. And that's just where we at. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, man, I do believe that subconsciously these men know that it takes more than that that's not even a part of being a man hey there are there are butch lesbians out here man who get more beautiful women than the average man can man Does that make get, her a man getting them and I'm, I'm sure you've seen it you, you'll see shorty you know who butch ride up with the coldest piece man always got a cold, cold piece. Piece. I, I, I i don't think i've ever seen one with a butter face bro me either they always get the bad ones and, they, and listen, the butch ain't got no manhood, if you know what I mean. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, she even tries to manufacture a little bit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, so and get one, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So we have to understand, man, that life is full of obstacles, opportunities, you know, ups, downs. You know, it's full of a whole lot of things. And even if you exclude the female from your life your life is still going to be filled with all of those things so if you're looking for us to talk about some dating or how to get some women or something like that tonight man it is not going to happen that's not what we're talking about we're talking about manhood we ain't talking mm -hmm. about boyhood we ain't talking about pluralism we ain't talking about none of that we talk about that enough absolutely we're talking about manhood tonight man <clears throat> now let me ask you something man. sure bro how does it strike you to see all of the cattiness amongst men or on a platform that we don't control and can be booted off at any particular time mm -hmm. and we're here to be a voice to the people not just the youth the people mm -hmm. we ain't got time for all that stuff brother so it, i know how it rubs me man how does it rub you brother you know, it's it's a sad thing to see because uh, this should be a space where we can come together and disagree as men. Now, here go the thing. And I'm sure the audience would agree with this, right? The real thinkers, the real movers and shakers, the one who's really telling the truth is not your Louis Farrakhan's, your Jesse Jackson's, your Al Sharpton's. You want to hear some real stuff. We come here. Because out there, they ain't got it. They, they can't touch what we got in here. Name your favorite uh, author that's out there 
name your favorite uh, religious speaker that's out there. They ain't got what we got. So here, although we may disagree, grown men need to learn how to respectfully and peacefully disagree. What you eat don't make me defecate. So if we can agree on a certain amount of things, fine. If we disagree on these things, fine. We put that to the side. We ain't got to agree on everything. But to use this space uh, for the proverbial uh, boxing ring, man, I think this is crazy. But here's the thing with me. I'm from the street too, man. Now, I ain't no thug. I ain't thug but I'm from the street because in my opinion, if you street, you in the street, you in the street getting it for real, for real. So I could say form a thuggo. But man, we don't lip box on the tube. We don't lip box on social media. I know that's the thing they do now. But, you know, I grew up in the 90s, man. If you're going to do something, you're going to do something. You're going to be about it. You're going to be about it. But you ain't got to tell nobody about it. And I'm not in here on the tube to be a tough guy. But it's a lot of guys arguing and bicking and going back and forth. Some of the guys I like. But even if the guy, even the guys that I don't like on here, which are a few, you won't even know it. Because I ain't got time to address that. So, yeah, man, it's a sad thing, man. We have enemies all around us. And when we become enemies of each other, man, it's a sad, sad thing. Here go the thing, BOA. We can do a lot more and come much greater to this thing, united and as a unit, than we can far apart. And what's crazy is a lot of guys like to feed into, you know, all the cattiness that we see on the tube. Mm. And I think it's unproductive. I think, um, we too fragmented on here, you know. Yeah. So yeah, it breaks my heart to see that because I've I've watched this thing. I'm not sure how long you've been uh, watching, but I've been watching this thing. I've been a part of this community since like 2010, and uh, decided to make a channel. You know, a few years after I started hearing content, I'm from like the old school, uh, Thug Tish and Wisdom, uh, K Soul and Black, um, Sergeant Willie P, the old school guys, even guys that were here before Tommy. So I've seen this community go from just a few brothers speaking the truth to now we got hundreds on top of hundreds on top of hundreds. And uh, I like the way it's going. But when we get to, you know, the arguing and the bickering and the cattiness and then the egos, you know, then that's what, what hurts my heart. Because we're supposed to be the best of the best, the smartest of the smart, the wisest of the wise. And we, I expect better of us. But I rest my peace there. You know what my thing about this whole thing is, bro? We don't have many differences. I mean, just as black men, we simply don't have many differences. We can have differences in upbringing. Okay, maybe somebody had both parents. Maybe somebody had a single mom. You know, maybe somebody grew up in the, you know, somebody went to private school. Somebody went to public school. I'm talking about as adults. As adult black men in this society, we don't have many differences. Because all that foolishness you did as a kid goes out the window when you get out here in the real world. So we mm -hmm. all got to figure out a way to make money and survive. We all got to try to figure out a way to, to create, at least attempt to create some generational wealth for those that we've created in this world and those mm -hmm. who will create. We all have to duck and dodge and make sure that we're equipped to either defend ourselves or, or do whatever we have to do if we're apprehended by, you know, certain sects of the of the. I like to call them the civilian military force. You know, we have to, we're, we all face the same obstacles as a group and we having a hell of a time overcoming them as a group. So the more fragmented we become, the more we're like sitting ducks. Mm -hmm. You know, it, I, I, I've seen, I've saw where, you know, you got this great wildebeest crossing in, in Africa. You know, once a year, the wildebeest cross you know, and then, of course, they come back, but they cross over and the crocodiles are just sitting in the rivers waiting on them. Mm -hmm. There are such there's such a multitude of wildebeest coming through and some zebra in there and everything. Most times, man, the crocodiles don't even get a meal. Because mm -hmm. when there's a multitude of, of, of any individual group, they're hard to defeat. Mm -hmm. But if you let one straggler get away from the group, he's easy pickings. And this is the same thing going on with us here, man. We have an opportunity here that men didn't have. When I was a young boy, men didn't have this opportunity. You had to be right there in the zone to get these men face to face at the barbershop or somewhere. Now mm -hmm. you can be anywhere in the world and you can have some men come log on and listen to you for guidance. Mm -hmm. Guidance. 
anything you're doing that's not guidance and positive information, hey, man, you're wasting the space that probably should be given to someone else. Mm-hmm. And they, they think the most high plays, man. The most high don't play with you when you're playing with your blessings, man. Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I say this, bro. You know, and, and like you said, there are some of these guys that 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 I that I, I like. There are some of these guys that I don't really deal with. But even if I don't deal with you, man, hey, fine. That ain't got nothing to do with your content. There are guys, man. Listen, I listen to some cast content that I don't even like. I don't like the guy. I don't like the cat. I don't like what he represent. Mm-hmm. But he's hella informative when he speaks about certain things. Mm-hmm. And you know, I, I, I say, man, we got to keep our personal feelings, keep your emotions out of the business. Mm-hmm. See, that's another aspect of manhood. Keep your emotions out of the business. Like there's a way we have to live, man. And another thing is this, brother. We're men of God. So mm-hmm. we don't have the luxury of being what everybody else can be. Absolutely. And I, and I think that's the number one thing about manhood. What you just said, because there is no manhood without the most high. None. And as a man, as men, what we should try to do is copy him, copy the most high, copy our father. And one of the beautiful things about the father, the most high, is that he has principles, right? And I think principles is what truly sets a man apart from a woman, what sets a man apart from a criminal or a thief, what sets a man apart from a simp uh, for me it's principles first and the most high puts his principles first a principal man is a man who can be trusted and respected i like the i, I got this saying um principles over everything now for a woman right it's feelings over everything but as a man and being a man, it's your principles over everything. And being a man is everything, Dr. B.O.A. It's everything that a woman is not. It's the absolute opposite. She puts her feelings first. She puts her emotions first. No, we have to be better. When you're in the trenches and, you know, in the middle of war, no, ain't no time for feelings. Principles are everything. And here's the thing about principle. I've I've known guys, BOA, who have listened to my channel, listening to this content and try to enact principles in their life. But they forgot one important component that I speak about. And that's when you do have principles. I believe the Most High sends us a test to try you to see if you are going to be a principled man. And for the sake of argument, just for clarity, principles are basically the rules that you choose as a man, individual rules as a man that you choose to live by. For example, I have this rule. Dr. B.O.A. has this rule. We don't sleep with another man's wife. Now, she can be a dime piece, right? Really ain't no tens, but just for the sake of coming, she can be a dime, right? She can be bodied up. She can be throwing it at you. But guess what? I'll still decline, although she's a dime, because I have principles. Any man who can't put principles above his bippy is just not a man. No matter how much pain, no matter how large the sacrifice, it's principles first. Real quick, another example. I believe in polygyny, right? And I've dealt with many chicks that believe in monogamy. That's their business. What she believe in ain't got to do with what I believe in. But I had women who wanted me to change my beliefs, change my rules, change my principles. Women that I've cared about. Women that I had to watch walk away because of principles. Now, it wasn't easy to watch that big old rear walk away, right? And not just a big old rear. The feelings that I had for her still have and are stuck with at the time. It was tough to see that. 
But see, for me, it's principles over everything. I've said this on a, on a live stream recently. I'd rather be single than the beta. And that's a principle because I'm not going to stop being a man to please a woman. And once you start setting your life in that order to try to please others, whether it's a woman or your family, or your friends, then you're not a man anymore. You're not. What are your rules? What are your principles as a man? Each man within the side of my voice, you're supposed to have rules and principles. What are they? If you don't have them, what separates you from an animal? What separates you from a woman? What are your principles? What are your rules? What are the things that you just won't do? Church. What are the things that you are going to do? Where are your principles? At? What are you standing on? When you meet a woman, what are you standing on? When you face the face, when you're on your job, what are you standing on? Where's your integrity? See, if you don't have this, gentlemen, then the question becomes, who are you and what are you good for? What's your purpose of being? If you don't have these principles, if you don't have this understanding, if you don't have these rules, it makes you a man without these things. It makes you a man that's movable. You're supposed to be a tree planted by the rivers, as it says in the book of Psalms, the first chapter. You're supposed to be that immovable object. Immovable. Standing on what? Your principle. Standing on your ground. This is very important because, again, this is what a man is. And if you don't have those things in the forefront of your life, if they can't, if they're not visible, if your principles are not visible, what you stand for is not visible, then really what are you? Are you a man that'll compromise your principle? Are you a man that'll do anything for money? Are you a man that'll do anything for attention, for likes? What kind of man are you? So I'm gonna say this again. A man is defined by his principles his rules, and his ability to stand on those things. Now, for instance, I can't tell a man what to do, be away. I don't want to be long with it, but let me make this real point. And I don't put these men down, but I know men who say, well, there can't be no man in their house because their woman might leave them. You can't be no man in your house because you might have to end up paying child support. You can't be no man in your house because your woman might call a popo on. You can't be a man in your house because she'll divorce you and have alimony. Then the question is, how much is your manhood worth? How much? So you basically are putting a situation in a dollar figure on your manhood. So your manhood is not worth alimony. Your manhood is not worth child support. Your alimony is not worth watching her walk away. What is your manhood worth to you? Because if your manhood is not worth being alone, even with your wife of 10, 15, 20 years, then you're simply not a man. You might as well trade in your pair, wear woman's garment, and not ever speak of yourself as a man in any way, shape, or form. But back to you, BOA. Church. Church, man. Look at here, man. Where else you gonna go and get this? Hey, man, you could be anywhere, anywhere right now, but your principles have directed you here to absorb and observe what you knew you were going to get here. Now, see, there are many other men who could be here, but their principles led them somewhere else. See, this is the thing, man. You got to have pride. Now, we all know pride cometh before the fall. I'm not talking about pride in yourself. You ain't got no reason to be proud. You're just a man. If you go outside right now, man, get bit by the wrong spot, you're going to die. You're just a human man. You got to have pride in your connection with the most high. You see, when you've got pride in that connection with the most high, pride in living a life that's pleasing to the most high, then your principles come easy to you. You don't flip flop and go back and forth because, ah, unlike man, the word of the most high stands true generation after generation. So if you plant yourself in your manhood in any other soil other than the most high, man, I'm telling you. Any wind that comes, you blowing that way. Any flood that comes, it's washing you away. And one of those floods is love and relationships. One of those, fl one of those floods is the loving 
and relationships a little bit different. As a man, you have got to know who you are and understand that you don't know anything in the world better than that. And whatever your principles are, hey, man, we ain't principal comparing in here. Yeah, there's some that there's some things that got to be etched in stone because they are based in the word of the most high. But there are other things that you have to figure as you go in this world. Of course, the word of the most high is the basis of them all. But hey, man, if you're in the hood, one of your principles is no snitching. Now, outside of the hood, you're like, that's crazy. But in that environment, that's one of your principles. And I'm going to tell you what. In that environment, you're going to stick to that principle or you're going to pay the consequences. You see, principles are about where you live. Principles are about how do you navigate this environment successfully. Now, I know some beta male said, man, Johnny may come in here and say, well, if I live in the hood, I tell the police and nobody's going to do anything to me. OK, I want you to go in there and try. <laughs> That's why the goal is to get yourself out of an environment that has principles that are rather unscrupulous in the real world. You see, it's rather unscrupulous to know who killed your brother and not do anything or say anything. And he's still riding around the neighborhood. That's rather unscrupulous. In the real world, somebody's going to have you locked up in prison. But principles are based on what you learn and what you apply. Some principles going to rub people the wrong way. This, hey, man, I, listen, man, I've had a married woman tell me I'm scared of her loving before. Shame in language, of course. Yeah, I know you you, you, you look like you, you're tall, that you're scared of this, blah, blah, blah. Look like, told me, man, look like I got a little wee wee. I said, well, you know what, shout I do got a little wee wee. So that means you shouldn't want to go through all this adultery for a little wee wee, right? <laughs> See, you got to understand, man that there are groups of people who oppose your success, not just your financial success, your spiritual success. There are people that don't want you to have a strong relationship with the Most High. And those people work for the opponents of the Most High. And they're always going to come test you on the basis of your principles. And that's why, as the brother Ram was saying, you'll have a man, he's a strong man. He stands on principles until he gets around this old lady at home. Mm -hmm. He's a gangster in the streets. Hey, man, hear that man to knock your block off. But at home with this old lady, he's a yes, dear type of dude. Many men that you come across know how to fake it until they make it. Many men have perfected the art of acting as if they are men of principle. But you can act all you want to and talk all you want to. Everyone must be gauged on their actions. Even you, look at yourself. Tell yourself that you're this principled man and then ask yourself how you responded in that pressure situation over there. Did you stick? Did you stand on principles? Or did you compromise just a little bit so you could go along and get along? You got to die for something, man, because eventually one day you're going to die for nothing. Mm -hmm. And if your principles ain't the thing, man, that you'll live and die for, man, I'm going to be honest with you, brother. You don't deserve the oxygen that you wasted. Let's give that to oxygen to a man who's going to stand on principles no matter what. Because that is a man I can respect and that is a man I can trust to be who he says he is no matter what the situation is. It's the book about for running, man, homie. Read it or we.